Hey friends, it's Laurie. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm sharing 15 of my favorite spring and Easter DIYs and I hope you enjoy them. To start my bunny DIY, I'm using one of the Dollar Tree tinsel bunnies. I'm removing the paper inserts and I'm clipping away the plastic bars. Then using my clippers, I'm removing the ears from the top of the head. After I clipped them, they were still attached by the tinsel, so I used my scissors and I cut them free. I'm using a children's size yellow spring hat from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be attaching the ears onto the top. I placed some hot glue on the bottom back side of the ear and then I just attached it to the top of my hat. After my first ear was attached, I then did the same for my second. I'm going to embellish my hat by using some flowers from the Dollar Tree and some that I had in my stash. This part of the project is so easy. All I'm doing is clipping off the back stems from the flowers and then I'm just randomly hot gluing them in place around the hat. I didn't have any set pattern or design, I just kept adding them around the hat until it was full. After I attached all my flowers, I then added in a few random leaves here and there just to give it a little more of a natural look. With my hat complete, it's now time to make the body for the bunny. I'm using one of the plastic garden dishes from the Dollar Tree and I'm removing all the labels. When I'm done, I'm then spraying the outside part of my dish with my white spray paint. I'm using my glue gun to attach the hat about a third of the way down the dish. With my hat in place, I'm using some of this pretty Dollar Tree Easter ribbon and I'm making a simple bow. I decided how long I wanted my tails and when I was finished, I fluffed up my bow and then using my hot glue gun, I attached it to the bunny's hat. To finish up, I'm using one of the bunny cotton tails from the Dollar Tree. I removed the back clip and then using my glue gun, I attached it to my bunny's body. And with that, my Dollar Tree Easter Bunny is complete. To start my project, I'm using two of the wooden crates from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be painting them, so I'm removing both stickers from the bottom. I'm using my thick Starbond glue to attach both of the crates together. I love using this glue because it sets up in about a minute. I do have the company link and a coupon code in my description in case you'd like to check it out. Now that the crates are attached, I'm going to be using six medium sized wooden beads as my legs. Once again, I'm using my Starbond glue to attach my legs to the bottom of the crates. I'm placing the two center beads on the line where I had attached the two crates together. Because this glue dries so quickly, by the time I placed on my last bead, it was already ready to paint. One of the fun parts of this project is you can paint this any color you'd like. 
I'm going to use my white acrylic paint and give it a good coat. Once my stand is painted and dried, I'm going to be adding on a buffalo check accent ribbon. This ribbon came from Michaels and it's a 7 8 inch, but they do sell a smaller version at the Dollar Tree and that would work just as well. I'm using my glue gun and I'm attaching the ribbon to the center section of the box. Having the three sections makes it so much easier to keep your ribbon straight while you're attaching it. I'm adding the word spring to the front of my flower box and I'm using some wooden letters that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Once I have the word spring spelled out, I'm using this pretty blue acrylic paint and I'm giving each of my letters a coat. Once my letters have dried, I'm adding a black and white acrylic paint accent. I'm using the end of a paintbrush to make dots and the size of your paintbrush will determine the size of your dots. I dipped the end of my paintbrush into my black paint and then I randomly added the dots to the letters. And once the black was done, I then did the same thing for the white. Now that my letters have dried, I've placed them in position on the front of my flower box and I'm going to attach them with my glue gun. I chose the word spring, but there are so many other choices. The ideas are endless. I'm using two of the larger Dollar Tree terracotta pots to hold my flowers. Once again, I'm using my white acrylic paint and I'm giving them each a coat on the inside and the out. Once they both have dried, I'm going to be using my Mod Podge and attaching the same buffalo check ribbon around the top edge. I'm measuring the ribbon around the opening, I'm cutting it to size, and then I'm cutting an extra ribbon for my other pot. With both my ribbons cut, I'm adding a generous amount of Mod Podge around the top, and then I'm attaching my ribbons. After my first pot is complete, I follow the exact same instructions for my second. With both my pots complete, I'm now going to use the same technique as I used on my spring letters. Using the same black and blue acrylic paint, I'm using the end of my paintbrush and I'm making dots on both of the pots. I'm going to be making a small floral arrangement in each of my pots, so I'm using one of the styrofoam balls that I found in the floral department at the Dollar Tree. I don't want my flowers moving, so using my glue gun, I'm attaching each of the styrofoam balls to the bottom of my pots. To finish up my project, I'm using some of these pretty spring flowers from the Dollar Tree and a few that I already had on hand. I'm making a small floral arrangement in one of my pots, and when I'm done, I'm going to make its twin in the other. One of the fun parts of making this project are you can use any paint colors or flower colors that you like. And my favorite color is blue, so I'm always leaning towards that blue. With both of my florals complete, all that's left to do is to place them in my flower box. I want to raise my flower pots up just a bit, so I'm going to be using four of the tumbling tower blocks. So all I'm doing is placing two in each section. I add in my potted florals, I place a little lamb's ear around them, and my project is complete. I 
I'm starting my carrots DIY today by using some recycled wood that I cut into long skinny triangles. I'm going to make these into carrots and I have them cut at 10, 8, and 6 inches in length. Because I'm using recycled wood, I'm using my sandpaper to smooth down any of the rough edges. Now that all my carrots are sanded down, I'm going to be using this orange acrylic paint that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and I'm giving each one of them two coats. Once all three of my carrots have dried, I then drilled a small hole in the top of each of them. You can always do this before you paint them, it's just personal preference and I did it after. I'm decorating my carrots using some white acrylic paint. I'm adding some dots to my carrots by using the end of my paintbrush. All I'm doing is dipping the end of my paintbrush into my white paint and I'm randomly adding the dots to my carrots. For my larger carrot, I'm going to be adding on some stripes and I'm just going to kind of mark them out with my ruler and my pencil. I'm definitely not making them perfect, I'm just moving my ruler and marking some lines. Once I'm done, I'm following along the lines with my white acrylic paint and honestly, these are not perfect, I'm just kind of going along and just marking my lines. After my white paint dried, I'm going to change them up so they look a little more rustic and I'm just going to use a piece of old sandpaper and give them all a good sanding. For some crazy reason, my camera did not film me adding the carrot tops, but all I did was use some of this leftover greenery. I already had it on hand and I cut off a few pieces and I hot glued them into the holes that I had drilled onto the top. To finish up my rustic carrot project, all I'm doing is adding some Dollar Tree twine and I'm giving each of them a bow accent. If you don't want to use twine, you can always add on a ribbon and that would look super cute too. And with that, my recycled rustic carrots are complete. I'm starting my spring Easter swag by using two of the Dollar Tree Easter trees. I removed both from the boxes and they come with a little plastic end. I removed that and then I just kind of fluffed up the branches. I'm using some floral wire to attach both ends of the trees together. I'm just wrapping the wire tightly around the metal supports and then I'm twisting it into place. I kept adding my wire and twisting it on until I felt that the ends were bound tightly together. When I was done, and to give it a little extra support, I then added on some hot glue. These trees are so pretty and iridescent, but I just want to kind of cut that a bit, so I'm going to use my white acrylic paint. So using my paintbrush, I'm just adding some white paint here and there randomly on the two trees, just to kind of tone it down a bit. I'm using an assortment of spring flowers, most are from the Dollar Tree, and I'm using a few that I had on hand. I'm cutting the stems from the base, and I'm removing the leaves, and then I'm starting to hot glue my flowers into place. As I'm adding them, I like to balance both the left and the right. So what I try to do is whatever I'm hot gluing on one side, I try to hot glue the exact same thing on the other. And all I'm doing is continuing to add my hot glue and my flowers on one side and then the other. After I've added my flowers, I'm going to add in some greenery and I'm using some of the leaves that I pulled off the flower stems. I'm using the leaves from my foxtails, but any of them will work great. Then once again, I'm using my hot glue gun and I'm just popping them into place.
Once all my leaves are in place, I'm now going to use some of these Dollar Tree carrots. Of course, this is a carrot hop and I'm going to add them into my swag. If you'd like to make some no-sew fabric Dollar Tree carrots, make sure to come back after the hop and check out my five carrot video that I'll have linked below in my description. Now that I've added my carrots, I'm going to be adding in some of the sparkly Dollar Tree Easter eggs as an accent. I used my glue gun and I just added the eggs here and there, kind of filling in the open spots on my swag. I ended up using one package of the Dollar Tree eggs, but you can always use more or less. On the center of my swag, I'm adding a bow and I'm using this pretty Easter ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Using my bow maker, I made a four inch bow with 10 inch tails. I fluffed up my bow and I'm adding it to my swag by wrapping the wires around the center support. Now that my bow's secured in place, I want to fill in the void above it. To do that, I'm just adding in some extra flowers to fill in the open space. Once I finished adding in all my flowers, eggs, and especially my carrots, my spring Easter swag was complete. Starting my first project off by using one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be removing the little cotton tails. I'm hanging on to them because I'm going to be using a couple in my projects. I removed the hanger from the sign and we're going to be working on the plain side. I found this printout on Pinterest and I will link it below. I printed it out on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Once my bunny was cut out, I set it aside, and then using my white acrylic paint, I gave my sign a coat. Now that it's dry, I'm using my ruler and measuring out some lines on the top. The sign measures nine inches wide, so I'm making a mark at every one and a half inch. When I was done, I used the marks that I made and followed lines with my ruler. I want to give my sign a distressed look, so I'm just using my pencil and sketching along the line. I'm definitely not being neat, and when I'm done, I'm using my finger and I'm just running it along the line and kind of smudging up the pencil mark. When I was done, I followed the exact same instructions for my next four lines. To give my sign some normal wood imperfections, I'm just using my pencil and sketching little marks here and there. And once again, when I'm done, I just use my finger to kind of smudge it onto the board. With my sign complete, I'm now going to add my bunny using some Mod Podge. Using a paintbrush, I added some to the back of my cutout and then I centered it on my sign. I then pressed it down to keep it in place. For this part of the project, I headed outside and I picked up the straightest sticks I could find. I'm using all random sizes of wood and all I'm doing is placing the piece against my cutout and then I'm cutting it to size. Then I just hot glue it into place. From there, I continue adding my sticks and my twigs. I measure them, I cut them to size, and then I hot glue them into place. One of the things that I really like about this project is not only is it super cute, but it's a rustic piece, so 
if your ends aren't perfect or everything doesn't match up exactly, it's not to worry because it just adds character to your sign. Once the body and the head was done, I then worked my way up to the ears. With the ears complete, I'm filling in some of the open space between the sticks by adding more sticks to the bunny. And once again, all I'm doing is measuring them out, cutting them, and hot gluing them into place. Now that the bunny's complete, I'm going to be adding a frame using some pawpaw branches that I have in my yard. They grow straight and have smooth bark. I added in some video. I thought you might like to see what they look like. They also bear a green fruit, but I am not a big fan. If you don't have a pawpaw tree, just use the straightest sticks you can find and that will work just as well. I'm doubling up on each of the sides. I pre-measured my branches and cut them and now I'm just hot gluing them into place. With my frame all put together, I'm making a hanger by using a piece of jute and I'm just cutting it to size and hot gluing it onto the back. To give my hanger a little extra strength, I attached a piece of burlap. I'm making a bow for my bunny using this pretty polka dot burlap ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. I decided what size, I made a simple bow and then using my glue gun, I hot glued it to the side of the bunny's neck. To finish up, I'm using one of the little cotton tails that I pulled off the sign in the beginning and I'm just hot gluing it into place. And with that, my rustic bunny sign that costs a little more than a dollar is complete. <laughs> Starting my carrot swag by using five of these wooden carrots from the Dollar Tree. For my fabric, I'm using this cute gingham check that I found at the Dollar Tree, along with some orange fabric that I had on hand. To cover my carrot, I'm placing it on the wrong side of the fabric. Then using a pencil, I'm sketching around it, giving myself enough extra fabric to fold it over the back. After I have it cut out, I'm then using my Mod Podge to attach the two pieces together. I'm placing a generous amount on the front and the side of my carrot, and then I'm placing the fabric directly on top. When I'm done, I'm turning the carrot over and I'm adding some Mod Podge to the side, and then I'm just folding the fabric around the edges of the carrot. After my first side is complete, I then do the same thing on the other. When I'm done and I come to the point, I just fold it over to give it a nice finished edge. After my first gingham carrot is complete, I then go on and I follow the exact same instructions for two more gingham carrots. The back of my carrots are facing a wall, so I'm not covering them, but if you want, all you need to do is cut another piece of fabric and just attach it onto the back. I now have my three gingham print carrots made, and so I'm going to use my orange fabric and make two more. Once again, I'm following the exact same instructions to make my plain orange carrots. When I'm finished, I'll have five covered carrots. To paint each of my carrot tops, I'm using some of this shamrock green acrylic paint. Once I let the first coat dry, I did have to go back and give them each a second. 
I'm using 15 small wooden beads as accents and I did double check that my jute would fit through the openings. I slid them onto a skewer to make them easy to paint and I'm painting 10 white and 5 orange. Once my beads have dried, I'm recycling the jute from my first project and I'm going to attach them all together. I slipped my jute through the opening and I made a knot on the other side. I'm just kind of eyeballing the length that I want to start with and I cut my jute at about 10 inches. I then added on my two white and my one orange bead. Once I was done, I wrapped my jute a couple of times around the top part of the carrot and I tied it off. By doing this, it will conceal where I attached the fabric to the carrot. This time, I'm following the exact same instructions, but I'm going to be using one of my plain orange carrots. I'm not measuring my jute as I go, I'm just kind of eyeballing it and this time, I cut it at about 13 inches. If you're more comfortable cutting your jute ahead of time, I cut mine allowing about three extra inches per length and per carat. With my first two complete, this gives you an idea of how they will hang on the wall. And now I'm heading over and starting with my next gingham carat. Once again, I'm following the exact same instructions with the exception that this time I'm cutting my jute at about 16 inches. I'm now adding my plain orange fabric carrot and this length of jute will be at about 19 inches. My last carrot will be my orange gingham and the length of this jute will be at about 22 inches. Once I'm done, I'm placing the carrots in the order that I want them to be. I'm then gathering the ends of the jute together and I'm tying them off in a knot. Now that they're all attached together, you can see how they'll hang on your wall. To hide the knot, I'm making a bow using the white two inch burlap from burlapfabric.com. I'll link that below and the two inch Dollar Tree burlap. I'll be attaching it together with a piece of floral wire. I'm matching up both ends of the burlap and giving myself about an eight inch tail. I'm then making about a three inch loop and then all I'm doing is twisting the burlap underneath and I'm making another three inch loop. I check that both my loops are the same size. I then twist my next loop of burlap matching my original loops. And to finish up, I make one more loop of burlap. I attach it all together using my piece of floral wire, and then I cut the tails to match. When I was done, I fluffed it up and I attached it over the knot. I made a little hanger out of a piece of jute and with that, our hanging carrot swag is complete. If you're new to my channel and you're enjoying my video, please consider clicking on that little red subscribe button below and leaving me a big thumbs up. And if we're already friends, I'm so happy to see you. I'm starting my bunny wreath with all Dollar Tree supplies. 
I'm using two of the 14 inch wire wreath forms and five bags of the plastic Easter eggs, along with five bags of the small sparkly eggs. I'm also using two rolls of the Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. You'll need some Easter ribbon. I'm using two and a half inch, and I'm also using the Dollar Tree 5 eighths of an inch sheer ribbon in assorted colors. I'm using the bunny from this Dollar Tree sign, along with the metal words, Welcome Spring, from this three pack. To make my base, I'm attaching the two wreath forms together using some floral wire. I'm placing the two forms back to back so that I have somewhat of a hollow center, and then using my floral wire, I'm wrapping the wire around all six supports and securing it together tightly. And when I'm done, I'm just tucking the excess wire underneath. With all the wire attached, I'm now using my burlap ribbon and I'm going to wrap the complete form. I began by placing some hot glue onto the support and attaching the ribbon. I began wrapping the ribbon and every here and there, I would add some hot glue onto the ribbon and then onto the support until my wreath was completely covered with the burlap ribbon. With that complete, I'm now adding on the larger eggs. Using my glue gun, I'm attaching them to the outside edge of my form. Because my eggs have a little hinge on one side so that they don't completely detach, that's where I'm adding my hot glue and I'm just securing it against the egg in front of it or behind it on the form. And this part is super easy. I'm just adding on the hot glue and working my way around. After my outside row is complete, I'm going to start my next row on the inside. And I'm just continuing on adding my eggs to the wreath until I have four complete rows. With that complete, I'm now going to add on the sheer ribbon, and because there's only a hint of color, I'm going to be using two pieces cut at eight inches. I'm using a yellow and white, and I'm angling both ends. I'm placing the two pieces together and tying a knot in the center. I paired up an assortment of different colors, making sure there were enough to tuck one between each egg. I placed a dot of hot glue between the eggs, then pushed the knotted end of the ribbon into the hot glue, and I just used the end of my foam brush. I'm using the small sparkly eggs, and I'm just removing the hangers from the end. I'm placing some hot glue on the small egg, and then I'm attaching it between the two pieces of ribbon. I continued adding in my ribbons and my small eggs, and once again, I made sure that they were all heading in the same direction. I continued working my way around, adding in all the ribbons and the eggs until all the openings between the larger eggs were filled. I'm only adding the bunny from this Dollar Tree bunny sign, so I'm removing the bunny, the hangers, and the carrots. Because I'm adding on a different bow, I'm removing the burlap bow as well. I'm using this Dollar Tree Easter egg ribbon and I cut a 14 inch piece. I folded the ribbon in half and then I folded each end into the center. I then used my glue gun to attach the two ends to the center of the ribbon. I added a line of glue down the center and I squeezed my bow together and then I folded it in half to make sure the two ends were even. I used a short piece of sheer ribbon. I wrapped it around the center and then I tied it in the back in a couple of knots. I cut about a two inch piece of ribbon and I added a bit of hot glue in the center and folded the two sides in. I then added some hot glue to the center of my bow and I wrapped the small piece around. I then attached it to the back of the bow. I then used my glue gun to attach some to the top of the bunny sign and attached my new bow. 
I'm using the two metal words Welcome Spring from the Dollar Tree 3 pack and I'm painting both with this pretty blue acrylic paint. Once the first coat was dry, I then went over them and gave them a second. I placed the bunny head in the center of the wreath and then I attached it in place with my glue gun. I'm attaching the word welcome onto the bunny covering the two original hanger holes. I then centered the word spring under the bunny and I hot glued that in place as well. With that complete, my welcome spring Easter bunny egg wreath is ready to hang. I'm starting my DIY by using one of the small Dollar Tree foam footballs. My Dollar Tree didn't have any eggs, so I'm going to use this instead. I'm also using one of the Dollar Tree glass candlestick holders along with some yellow spray paint. Now that it's painted and dry, I'm going to get the measurement of where to cut my football. I want it to sit flat, so I'm taking off about an inch. With that complete, I'm giving my football a coat of white chalk paint. I'm not being super fussy, it's basically to just cover the colors of the football. To cover my egg, I'm using some purple, white, and yellow flowers from the Dollar Tree. I removed the flowers from the stems. And once I had my pile, using my hot glue gun, I started to glue them around my egg. As I was adding them, I didn't have any set pattern. I just kept gluing them here and there until my egg was covered in flowers. I'm making this project for spring and Easter, but I think if you changed up the colors of the flowers and the base, this would be so pretty to use all year long. Now that my egg is complete, and before I add it to the base, I'm going to use some white acrylic paint, the end of my paintbrush, and I'm going to add on some dots. I'm just randomly adding the dots here and there, and this step is completely optional. I just wanted to add on a little bit of whimsy. When my base was dry, using my glue gun, I simply added my egg to the top. To finish up, I used this pretty purple sheer ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree and I made a simple bow. I used my glue gun and attached my bow to the base and with that, my Easter egg tree is complete. I'm starting by using this grapevine wreath that I picked up at Michael's. I'm using an assortment of leftover leaves and flowers, and most of these came from the Dollar Tree. Getting started, I'm attaching some hot glue to the bottom of my silk flower, and then I'm attaching it onto the grapevine wreath. When I'm attaching the flowers, sometimes I place the glue on the back of the flowers and then sometimes I just place it directly onto the wreath. As I'm adding the flowers, my rule of thumb is to always keep the flowers heading in the same direction. If you have an assortment of random leaves and flowers on hand, this will be the perfect way to use them. I continued adding on the flowers and I have no specific pattern until my wreath was completely covered. I'm adding some leaves onto my wreath, 
so I'm making sure to take the clusters of leaves and cutting them into single pieces. Now that I have them all cut, I'm adding them around the wreath here and there to just add in a bit of greenery. This is so easy to make and now that I'm done, I'm going to finish up by making a bow. You can always leave your wreath as is, but I decided to use this pretty blue wired ribbon. I made a 10 inch bow with 18 inch tails and when I was done, I wrapped it together with a chenille stem. When I was done, I then gave it a good fluffing and attached it to my wreath. And with that, my wreath is ready to hang. I'm starting my hop to it bunny by using one of the small wooden crates from the Dollar Tree. I'm then cutting two craft sticks into four pieces that are large enough to cover the stars on the end. Using my star bond glue, I'm using my cut craft sticks and I'm covering both stars. With all my pieces glued into place, I'm now using my white acrylic paint and I'm giving it a complete coat. Once I'm done, I'm setting the crate aside to dry and I'm going to be using 12 of the tumbling tower blocks. I'm using them as a frame and I'm painting them with this pretty gray acrylic paint. I'm also painting two more tumbling blocks and I'm using my white acrylic paint. I'm going to end up using these as a base. I'm once again using my Star Bond glue. It sets up in just about a minute. It works great with wood, so I'm using that to attach my blocks to the front of the crate. I love using this glue when I'm working on my projects because it sets the wood up so quickly. And if you're interested in trying it, I have the link to Star Bond below in my description along with a coupon code. I continue adding the blocks to the crate, making sure that I glue them as tightly together as possible. Once all my gray blocks are added and my frame is complete, I'm then gluing the two white blocks onto the bottom as a base for my project. I'm using one wooden bunny and some buffalo check fabric and I picked these both up at the Dollar Tree. I cut a piece of the fabric just a bit larger than the bunny and I'm using some of my Mod Podge to attach them both together. On one side of the bunny I used my paintbrush and I gave it a good thick coat of Mod Podge. I then placed the fabric onto the bunny making sure it was lying flat. Once the fabric has dried, I'm cutting around the outline of the bunny and I'm leaving a small edge. This time I'm using my finger and I'm placing some Mod Podge around the outside edge of the bunny. Once I'm done, all I do is fold the edges of the fabric over so they attach to the other side of the bunny. I'm using fabric, but you can always use decorative paper or even cover it with a gift bag. I want to add on an accent to my bunny, so I'm using some of this pretty pink and white gingham ribbon that I bought at the Dollar Tree. I made a simple bow and I'm hot gluing it onto her neck. With our frame and our bunny complete, it's time to work on the words and I'm using some of these wooden letters that I bought at the Dollar Tree. I picked out the letters to spell the word hop to it. I thought that was kind of fun and I'm going to paint them with my white acrylic paint. 
I'm using some gray, black, and pink acrylic paint, and I'm just using the back of a paintbrush and painting some random dots all over the letters. This step is completely optional. I just thought it would be fun to add a pop of color to all of my words. To put the project all together, I'm using some assorted flowers that I had on hand and I'm going to hot glue them inside of my frame. I didn't have a set plan of where I was going to put them. I just kind of randomly glued them into place. With my flowers all in place, I'm now adding on the words hop to it and I'm attaching them to the front of the frame once again with my Starbond glue. With my words hop to it attached to the front, it's now time to add the bunny, but this time I'm going to attach it by using my glue gun. I wanted to give my bunny a tail, so I went to my medicine cabinet and I grabbed a cotton ball. I just kind of rolled it between my hands to make it a little smaller, and then I attached it to the bunny with my glue gun. To finish up, I once again used my pink and white gingham ribbon. I made a simple bow, and then I hot glued it onto the top of my hop to it bunny frame. I'm starting my DIY by using two of the children's totes, one in yellow and one in blue, and I'm also using a blue child's hat. I found these all at the Dollar Tree. I removed the flowers from the totes and then I removed their handles. When I'm done, I'm using some lace that I had on hand and I'm hot gluing it around the inside of my blue tote. If you don't have any lace on hand, the Dollar Tree sells some really pretty lacy doilies and you can use those, just cut them up and they will work just as well. With my lace all glued into place, I'm now attaching the yellow tote over the top of the blue one. This is going to be my little girl's shirt, so once I had it in place, I just used my hot glue to attach them together. Both of these totes are not the exact same size, so I flipped it over and I just cut the yellow one and hot glued it a piece over each other so that it fit tightly against the blue tote. When I'm done, I'm taking my blue hat and deciding about where I want it to be on the back of the girl's shirt, and then all I'm doing is hot gluing it into place. To embellish her hat, I'm using an assortment of different colors of Dollar Tree flowers. I pulled them from their stems, and using my glue gun, I'm randomly adding them to my hat. When you're adding your flowers, don't ever worry about messing up because they're just so randomly placed here and there. I think it looks like a summer bouquet that's just wrapped around a hat. Now that I have some of my flowers attached to the hat, I'm going to be adding in my lemon slice accent. Dollar Tree sells this really nice package of three lemons and they're styrofoam. So using my knife, I'm cutting them into four sections. It's definitely messy and I cleaned up the sides with my scissors. And you know, this is completely optional. You can always add in a full lemon. Now that I have them all cleaned up, I'm just using my glue gun and I'm hot gluing them around the top of my hat. I'm adding my slices in about every two to three inches, but that's just personal preference. You can add in as many or as few as you'd like. 
with all my lemon slices added. I'm now using some more of my flowers and some leaves and I'm just filling around the rest of the hat. My Dollar Tree didn't have any type of hair in stock, so I thought I would make my own using these utility towels I found in the automotive department. I opened up the towel and then I folded it in half. I want to get six strips out of it. So once I folded it in half, I cut it on the fold and then I cut two more strips out of each section. As I was cutting them, it's pretty tough. I'm not sure if it was my scissors. I don't know, maybe it was me or the fabric, but I didn't cut them perfectly, but it won't matter. So don't be too tough on yourself if they don't come out perfect. I wanted to dye my fabric, so I used a couple of tablespoons of some inexpensive instant coffee with about a cup of hot water, and I just mixed it together. When I was done, I dropped in the strips of towel. I mixed them around a bit, and then I let them set for about an hour. After an hour, I wrung out each piece, and I placed it on a cookie sheet in my oven at about 250 degrees for 30 minutes. When I took them out, strangely enough, they don't really smell like coffee. With them all dry, I'm gathering three ends together and I'm tying them off with a rubber band. I placed a heavy bottle of paint on the end to hold them and then I braided my three pieces together. When I was done, I measured my braid against my girl and decided how long I wanted it to be and then I trimmed off the bottom. I then secured the end with another rubber band. With my braids complete, I used my glue gun and I attached one under each side of my hat. I had this piece of yellow tulle left over from a Dollar Tree bumblebee gnome that I made. So I'm going to turn this into a bow for the back of my hat. If you don't have any tulle on hand, you can always use some ribbon. I fluffed it up just a little bit and then I hot glued it to the back of my hat. I then gave the bottom a little trim. To finish up, I made two simple bows for the ends of my braids with this pretty Dollar Tree lemon ribbon. And then I hot glued each one over the rubber band at the bottom of the braid. And with that, my flower bonnet lemon girl is complete. To make the carrot garland, we're going to be using 12 carrots. You'll need some natural and green twine. I'm using five of these little white flowers. You'll need some green and yellow paint, some type of centers for the flowers. I'm going to paint these little clear buttons. And lastly, you'll need a paper bag. I cut a four inch piece of cardboard and then wrapped my green twine around it 12 times. I cut both ends free and then tied an additional piece around the center. You'll have a little bundle, put a dab of hot glue in the center and then press it together. Remove the top from the carrot and then glue on your bundle. I put a little hot glue on the inside of the carrot and then just press them together. Once my cat Emmeline, who likes to help me craft, decided to move off the fabric, I then cut 12 6 inch pieces of this green gingham. I'm making a bow for each pair of carrots. Once done, I simply glued them on. I removed five flower tops from the stem. I then removed all the little centers. I painted these clear plastic buttons with some yellow paint. I'm using a paper bag to make some leaves for the flowers. I cut some small pieces from the bag, then I cut some random sized discs. I was originally going to use the leaves from the flowers, but they just seemed kind of big to me. 
I had made these leaves before for one of my other projects, which if you want to check it out, I'll link it above. And so I thought they would work perfectly for these little flowers. I used my green paint and painted both sides. After both sides are painted and the leaf is still wet, fold it in half, leaving a slight crease. Once it dries, it'll actually resemble a real leaf. To attach them, I placed a little dab of glue on one end and then just pressed them together. I placed some hot glue on the back of the flower and pressed it onto the leaves. I then hot glued the button right in the center. I cut 7 feet of twine. I'm measuring 12 inches of jute from the end and then hot gluing my carrots on the 12 inch mark. Once I glued the front, I then glued the back. I then measured 6 inches from the back of the carrots and added my flower. I continued repeating the pattern every 6 inches until they were all attached. I made a loop in the jute on each end, then cut two longer strips in the gingham fabric made a simple bow, and attached them to each loop. Your carrot daisy garland is ready to hang. My kids love salsa and I'm going to be using three empty jars, but I did buy all of these at the Dollar Tree. For this project, I'm using three different colors of paint, a blue, a seafoam green, and a purple. I'm turning my paint into chalk paint by using some baking soda. Everyone makes theirs different for me, and I really don't measure. I'm using about a tablespoon of paint, and then about three quarters of a teaspoon of the baking soda. And then I mix it until it's well blended. Once I'm done, I then follow the same formula for my next two colors. Now that I have all my chalk paint made and ready, it's time to paint the jars. I made sure each of the jars were clean, and then all I'm doing is applying my chalk paint to each. I'm not painting the inside of the jars, but I am painting the inside of the rim. I'm going to let my jars dry overnight and then I'm baking them in my oven at 250 for 30 minutes. I love the way they look when they come out of the oven. It kind of reminds me of like a textured sea glass. I'm going to embellish all three around the top and I'm going to use some small silk flowers. These are just flowers that I've had left over and I finally found a purpose for them. Attaching the flowers is super easy. I just use my glue gun and start gluing them into place. I added on different colored flowers and I continued to glue them on the outside part of the rim. When I was done, because some of the flowers are smaller than the others, I did add a few extra here and there to fill out around the top. After my first jar was complete, I then added my flowers to the second and third. I'm using my E6000 to attach all three of my jars together. I placed the glue on the jars. I push them together and I let them set up for about six hours. I'm adding a one inch sheer ribbon as an accent and I'm also using the same ribbon to make some bows. I wrapped it around all three jars, I tied it in a knot and then I simply cut the extra ribbon away. When I was done, I used the same ribbon and I made a simple bow. Using my glue gun, I then attached it, hiding the knot. I made two more bows and attached them to the remaining jars. I gave the ribbon a little pinch in the middle and then attached my bow. 
To finish up, I added some pretty spring flowers into my tri vase, and my project was complete. I'm starting this DIY using two of the tin planters from the Dollar Tree, and both of these have the jute accent. I'm using a six and a seven and a half inch pot. I'm also using a 12 inch pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, and I'm actually recycling this one from a past project. So to begin, I'm removing the jute from both of the containers, and this is the easy part. It unwinds, comes off really easily, and I'm going to be saving it for my next project. Once you have it removed, trying to get the glue off can be a bit tricky. I didn't want to use chemicals, but you can. There are certain ones on the market you can try. The easiest way that I found to remove the glue was I boiled some water and I placed the top part with the glue in it. After it had set for a while, I then pulled it out and I just used a scrubby and it came right off. I made sure they were completely dry and then using my white spray paint, I gave them both a coat. I then painted my pizza pan with the same spray paint. The only problem with the spray paint is it scratches off super easy, so I'm going to give each of them a coat of Mod Podge to protect the finish. To paint the stripes on my pots, I've picked a purple, a yellow, and a pretty spring blue. On my six inch pot, I'm painting two stripes. I decided I'd use my purple for my bottom stripe and I ended up giving it two coats. Once my purple paint had dried, I'm then going to add on my yellow stripe. Because I'm adding the seven and a half inch planter on top, I'm not being super neat with the top part of my yellow paint. To finish up, I'm now painting a blue stripe on my seven and a half inch planter. To give all three of my pieces a little more character, I'm going to splatter them with all three colors of my paint. I'm starting with my purple paint and all I did was put it on a paintbrush and I'm tapping it against another paintbrush to add some speckles onto my pan and my two planter pots. Once my purple was complete, I then followed up with my yellow and my blue. I'm attaching my two pots together with some E6000. I'm placing some on the inside of my seven and a half inch pot, and then I'm sliding it over my six inch pot, making sure to match up the two seams. It's also important when you put them together to make sure they are level. I'm using some of these sparkly eggs from the Dollar Tree to embellish the outside edge on my tray. I started by removing the hangers that come on the end of each of the eggs. And then using my glue gun, I alternated the colors and started gluing them around the outside edge of my tray. I'm making my tray for Easter, but if you don't want to add eggs, you can always just paint the outside edge to match one of the stripes on your base. When you're done, you have this really pretty tray on its own, but I'm going to add mine to the base. I'm using my E6000 to attach the two pieces together. Once my glue is added, I then place my tray on the top making sure it is perfectly centered. To finish up, I'm adding a bow to my project using this pretty Dollar Tree Easter ribbon. I wrapped it around the top part of my base, I got my measurements, and I cut it to size. I hot glued it into place and I pinched the two ends together. I then made a simple bow and I hot glued it into place. And with that, my Easter tier pedestal tray is complete.
My next project is coming from the automotive department and I have to be honest with you, I stood there for a while and I had no clue what I could make with anything the Dollar Tree had until I found this funnel and I thought it looked like a gnome's hat. I'm using this pretty light green spray paint and I'm going to end up giving it three coats. While my hat is drying, I'm going to put together my gnome. I'm using two white women's socks from the Dollar Tree. I like to use the bath salts from the Dollar Tree. These are mint eucalyptus. They make the gnome smell so good. But if you don't want to use bath salts, you can always use rice. Filling the sock is super easy. You just slide it over the mouth of the container and then add in your bath salts. You can make your gnome any size you'd like. I usually use about one and a half containers of bath salts. Once my sock is filled, I'm then tying off the end with an elastic band. I'm then sliding my second sock over it. And let me tell you, that is a tongue twister. I'm now adding a second rubber band and I'm tying this sock off as well. What I like to do is take the end of the sock and cut it in two and then make a couple of knots. And this way it just kind of helps shore up the rubber band. To make the gnome's beard, I'm using a purple palm keychain from the Dollar Tree. And basically what you're going to do is just remove the keychain part. I then used my scissors to cut a small hole and then removed the inside contents. After my palms opened up, I try it against my gnome body and then I end up giving it a little bit of a haircut. And as I'm cutting it, I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a triangular shape. I tried it against my gnome body and then I used my glue gun to attach it into place. When I was gluing the beard on, I did make sure to leave a little open space and not glue it around the area where I'm going to be placing the nose. To make my gnome's feet, I'm using one of these Dollar Tree chalkboard heart tags. For the nose, I'm using one of these wooden half round knobs that I had on hand, but if you don't have any of these, you can always use a plastic ornament from the Dollar Tree or one of the table tennis balls. They both work great, and I've actually used the table tennis balls in some of my past gnome projects. I'm going to be painting both of my pieces with my parchment acrylic paint. With both my pieces dry, I'm now going to attach them to the gnome. I'm adding some hot glue onto the feet and then I'm placing my gnome right on top of it. Once that's done, I'm adding some glue to the back of my nose and I'm attaching that in place as well. I'm then using my glue gun to attach the rest of the pieces of the gnome's beard to its body. Now that my Dollar Tree funnel hat is painted and dry, I'm going to be adding some flower accents to it. Some of these flowers came from the Dollar Tree and some I already had on hand. I removed the petals from the stems and I'm going to be hot gluing them onto my hat. I'm going to be attaching my flowers in an angled circular pattern. I continued adding a dot of hot glue and attaching my flowers. As you can see, I'm continuing to add the flowers at an angle around the hat. When I was picking my flowers for this project, I made sure to find one color flower that matched my gnome's beard. Once all my flowers were glued into place, I then went back 
and filled in some of the open areas with more flowers and leaves just to kind of fill the hat out. To finish off the top of my hat, I took one sprig of the flowers and I bent it at an angle. Then using my glue gun, I added on some of the matching flowers from my hat. Once all my flowers were attached, I added some hot glue to the end of the sprig and I just stuck it into the top of my funnel hat. To add the hat to my gnome, I'm simply adding some hot glue inside of my funnel and then I'm placing it over the gnome's head. To finish up, I'm adding some of the small matching flowers to his beard. And once all my flowers are added to his beard, my funnel gnome is now complete. To make our bunny truck, we're going to start with two of the Happy Easter blue truck signs. You'll need the one inch wide craft sticks. I bought these at Walmart, but you can find smaller ones at the Dollar Tree. I'm using two wooden blocks, some of the black sticker letters. You'll need some acrylic paint. I'm using blue, black, white, and some brown. As accents, I'm using some buttons that I had on hand. You'll also need a cutter or a blade. The first thing to do is remove the hangers and the Happy Easter signs. Once that's done, you're going to remove the carrots from the back of the truck. Using your cutter, cut the outline of the truck. These signs are pretty thick, so you're going to have to use a little muscle. Continue working at it until the carrots separate from the truck. Once the first truck is complete, then do the exact same thing to the second truck. The next few steps are going to require measuring and cutting with your cutter. We're using pieces of the back of the Happy Easter sign to attach the two trucks together. You're going to measure and cut a two inch piece. You're then going to measure and cut one six inch piece out of the sign. If your ends aren't perfect and they have a little bit of residue left over from the cutting, just use a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand the ends. Using your glue gun, we're now going to glue the two pieces together. I placed a bead of hot glue on the edge and attached the two pieces. Now with that complete, we're going to cut two one and a half inch pieces. With those two complete, we're now going to cut one additional five inch piece. We're now going to attach all the cut pieces to one side of the blue truck. Place hot glue on one side on the edge of the piece that you've already glued together. Then press it against the truck approximately one inch from the top. Once it's in place, add some additional glue on the very bottom to hold it together. Now place some hot glue on one of the one and a half inch pieces, then place it against the end piece. And once again, add a little hot glue to the back to help hold it in place. We're now adding some hot glue to the edges of our five inch piece. Place the short side against the one and a half inch piece. To help shore it up, I'm adding some hot glue to the bottom and the side. To finish the bed of the truck, we're adding the last one and a half inch piece. Once again, place some hot glue on the edge and the side and then press it against the truck. Then add a little hot glue to the back. 
We're now going to make the roof, hood, and bed with the craft sticks. They are pretty thin, so I'm just using my scissors to cut off the rounded end. I'm going to measure and cut four craft sticks in six inch pieces. If the ends are rough, just use your sandpaper and smooth them out. We're going to split two of the sticks in half. Using your ruler, measure one half an inch. Cut down one side and then the other so you have two pieces. If the edges are rough, use your sandpaper to smooth them out. When you're done, you'll have four six by one half inch pieces. We're now cutting three three inch pieces. Again, cut two of the three inch pieces in half. I'm softening up this golden brown color with a little white. All these pieces are for the truck bed. Once I mixed the color that I liked, I then painted all pieces and both sides. When the pieces were dry, I used a pencil and I put two little circles on the end of each board. This is completely optional. I thought it added a little character to the back of the truck. Using your glue gun, all you're going to do is run a bead of glue along the side of the truck, just covering the bunny's feet. Now place one of your six inch planks onto the side. Once you've done this for the first truck, do the exact same thing for the other. On the underside of one of the half inch planks, place a dab of hot glue. Place this near the top on the outside part of the truck. Hold it in place until it sets up. We're now going to follow the exact same instructions and attach the second piece. Once again, holding it in place till it sets up. Follow the exact same instructions for the other truck. Now with the sides complete, we can attach both pieces together. Run a heavy bead of glue on the outside frame of the truck. Line the trucks up and then bring both pieces together. Hold it in place until it sets up. I'm using both of these three inch pieces as supports for the side rails. Using my hot glue, I attached all four pieces together. And once again, after doing it on one side, I did the exact same thing on the other. To finish up the back, we're going to start by adding the full three inch piece. Once again, I'm adding some hot glue and then just placing the three inch piece to cover the back. I'm placing hot glue on the ends of the two half inch pieces and then placing them against the side rails. To finish up, we're adding the last top piece. To cover the body, you're going to need 12 three inch pieces. Three of those pieces you will cut in half. Once cut, you're going to paint them all front and back. I'm using the color Sailing Sky and this is almost a perfect match to the truck. Once the pieces were painted, I then painted the inside of the truck. It's time to cover the outside of the truck and we're going to use our painted pieces. I'm attaching one of the half inch pieces on the back. And now I'm attaching three of the full three inch pieces. Make sure once you place your hot glue down that you press the pieces tightly together. I'm leaving an opening for the windshield so I'm placing one of the half inch pieces at the bottom. We're then adding three three inch pieces to cover the hood. I'm attaching three of the half inch pieces to give the hood a rounded look. The first piece I glued across and the second piece will sit on the little shelf. 
I'm attaching the third piece and that will cover the one sitting on the shelf. I'm attaching two three inch pieces to finish the front. And to complete the hood, I'm adding one three inch piece to cover the two half inch pieces and give the truck a more uniform look. There are a lot of pieces involved and I have all the measurements listed below in my description. I'm using a piece of sandpaper to just file down the edges a little bit on the truck and kind of smooth them out. I wanted to cover the two little holes on the front. So I cut a thin straight piece and a rounded piece from one of the leftover craft sticks. I did some touch up painting on the truck and then I painted the two small pieces. Once they were dry, I used my glue gun to attach them. To hide the hole on the door left by the hang tag, I'm adding a little sliver of wood from the craft stick. I simply just pushed it through the hole and then using my paint, I covered it up. The dry paint held it in place. To cover the hang tag holes in the tires, I'm doing the exact same thing, but this time I'm using black paint. To give the truck a little bling, I'm adding on some accent buttons. I'm hot gluing two in the center of the tires to look like rims, and then two on the front to look like headlights. I'm using two of the wooden blocks to make license plates for the truck. There's not a whole lot of room, so I came up with the word egg. I attached one to the front and then one to the back. To complete the project, I used some of my blue paint and painted the back. Thanks again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed making these spring and Easter DIYs with me. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below and I will see you all very soon. Bye everybody.